Uh, coming in, coming in. Yeah. Flex. I just want to win. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's ICU. And today I'm going to show you guys how to prepare your Apple TV 4K to be able to jailbreak it. Yes, that's right. The latest Apple TV sold by Apple is jailbreakable. There's just one small problem no USB port. Now, while yes, I'm sure some of you have already heard the reports that the Ethernet port actually contains USB built into it. However, that's not fully true. It's basically just a debugging port used by Apple themselves. It's not full-fledged USB, and we actually need something extra to bring USB functionality to the device. We need a breakout cable, and this is something that we're going to have to install inside of the device itself. Yes, that's right. You're going to have to rip apart your 4K Apple TV and uh, it's not going to look the same afterwards, but you will be able to jailbreak it, not just once, for ever because it is actually vulnerable to the checkmate exploit which is what check rain is based on and therefore you'll be able to jailbreak for life because this jailbreak exploits a flaw with inside the silicon of the chip itself can't be patched by apple it's a hardware vulnerability so if you do this you'll be modding your apple tv 4k but you'll be able to jailbreak it no matter what whenever apple releases a firmware you'll be able to jailbreak instantly. So to me, that's pretty awesome. It's worth turning the 4K Apple TV into a Frankenstein Apple TV for me. And uh, you're going to need some other stuff for this too. But before we get into all of the requirements, I feel I need to give a special shout out to little Steve on Twitter, aka just plain Steve. He is the one who actually created this breakout board assembly. Without him, we would not be able to jailbreak the Apple TV 4K. So in addition to the usual shout outs and mentions of all the developers who contributed linked down below in the description to the check rain jailbreak utility. I'm going to prominently place his Twitter handle there as well. I'm also going to be heavily referencing and using portions of his guide in this tutorial, his written guide, which will also be linked down below in the description. And you might find that helpful as well, because there are some pictures there and also some details of what to do if you accidentally mess up. So obviously, in addition to the Apple TV 4K, you're going to need the breakout cable itself. Now, this is what we're going to install inside of the device, but it is currently on back order right now. I will include a link to it down below in the description. You can order it. It will take a little bit to ship out, but that's not all you're going to need. Everything that I have for this tutorial is down below in the description. Of course, you can find your own alternatives, but these are just the best ones I found on a budget, and uh, I will be able to reuse these as well as you're gonna see in just a second. So first up, we actually need the wire for this. Now, this is a 30 gig gauge wire, you need something that small, and it is recommended that you get something with some good insulation. Link down below in the description. Like I said, next you do need lead-free solder and also a temperature adjustable soldering iron. That is key. We don't want to use too hot of a temperature to solder with. Then you need something to pry apart the bottom of the Apple TV, and ideally you want some anti-static tweezers. It's going to be very hard otherwise, and uh, that wire that I mentioned before, yeah, we've got a cut and strip that. So you need wire strippers. And finally, we do need a Torx T7. So this is what you're going to use to take off the four screws underneath the Apple TV. And then optional is just a hot glue gun. You don't necessarily need one, but it is recommended. Now, that's everything. It's a lot, I know, but it will be worth it. And I'm also going to say as a huge disclaimer right here, you may end up ruining your Apple TV, especially especially if you're not careful. So that is the key here. You need to be careful. If you're not careful, then you probably will run into a number of issues and could potentially break your device. And I will be not held accountable for that. This is all just a proof of concept and just me showing you my personal experience and how I was able to get it working on my 4K Apple TV. So now let's move into actually installing the breakout. So first thing first, we we need to rip off this bottom plastic piece that is protecting the internals of the device. Now, in order to do this, I did recommend that prying toolkit. I actually had to use most of the different tools, and I know I'm making it look 
just absolutely ridiculous and it seems like it should just be easier to pull this off and like I'm doing it wrong, but I promise you it is way harder than it looks. Heck, just go to iFixit. They even say in the notes, quote, these clips are a little more stubborn than what we've seen before, but still, they're not terribly difficult. I'll disagree with that last bit. Nevertheless, they have tons of experience. I don't. I highly recommend prying all the way around the device because I actually opted to try to just brute force it after prying off two sides and I broke a few of the clips. To me, that doesn't matter. I don't really care. You might be a little bit different though and you might want to help protect it. So definitely just work all the way around. You basically just need to shove something in there and then kind of just pull it back toward the outside of the Apple TV and wiggle it a little bit and then work your way around. You're probably not going to damage it as long as you're using a plastic pry tool or even a guitar pick will do. And uh, just give it some time be patient and you won't break the plastic bottom like I did. But that's not the only place where you need to exercise patience as you'll see in just a little bit. Next, we need to take off these four T7 torque screws. So just, you know, unscrew them with the T7. And once you do that, you can remove the heat sink. So that just falls right out. Just turn the Apple TV upside down and you'll be good. Now, we should install or at least position the little breakout board in between these two ports right here. So this is in between the HDMI and the Ethernet port. This is where it's designed to sit because space is at a premium inside of this thing. So you want to make sure that you do insert it properly. Make sure that it fits in there really snug because it is a really snug fit and that the actual side with the gold contacts sits flush against the metal piece right behind the back of the port here. And once you do that, the hard part is just beginning. Now, if you're ready for it, grab your soldering iron and set it to 350 degrees Celsius. No higher and any lower doesn't really seem to be that efficient. Also, right now, while we are looking at a close-up of it, I already did pre-cut these wires and solder them to the pins on the board. Now, when you do go to cut your wires, they need to be the proper length, obviously. That's something that you're going to have to experiment with. Just know that you can always trim a wire down, but you can't add more wire back unless you take it off and start over. So that's a little tip to keep in mind. Another one is that when you actually do get the wires cut, you only just want to strip the very, very ends of them because you need that insulation and uh, it also just makes it a little bit easier too if you only have a little bit exposed. You can play around with it and your mileage will of course vary. So first you need to make a connection. You need to solder the tenth pin on the board with this little gold contact right here. Now I, I can't, I don't really know how to say which gold contact it is other than just looking at uh, these reference pictures that I have and uh, the video that I actually took while soldering. Now you might be saying soldering, how do I solder? Well, <laughs> Great question. Most people don't know how to solder. I've soldered a few times over the years. Uh, I learned how to solder way back when. I probably don't know how to do it as efficiently as it could be done, and I'm probably not following all of the proper protocol for soldering, but I'm also the world's worst solderer. So you might want to look this up on your own, but if you want my input, basically you should just pre-solder the ends of your wires and do not, I repeat, do not hold the soldering iron on any of the contact points. It doesn't matter whether we're talking the breakout board or the Apple TV board itself for too long. If you do, you can actually lift up some of these gold pins from on the Apple TV's logic board itself. And trust me, that is something you do not want to do. Now, the guide that I'm going to link to down below in the description provided by the seller of this board actually includes what to do if you do lift up one of the gold pins. But trust me, it's not something that you want to to do. You don't want to have to deal with that major massive headache, which may end up causing your Apple TV to either A, become unusable or B, unjailbreakable because you did not install this thing correctly. So just take your time. 
be very patient, and you can always try to undo your mistakes by lifting up some of the solder if you get it in one of the wrong places. You also need to make sure that you are, again, so very careful. I can't emphasize this enough because if you accidentally have some solder connecting two points that aren't supposed to be connected, this might not work. So the wire has to be long enough to reach the connection point that is detailed here in this image, but also not so long that uh, it makes it almost impossible to connect. Um, or that it gets caught up once you do attach the heat sink to it. Now, next, I ended up installing these two wires here right above the SOC or system on a chip that is the A10X powering this 4K Apple TV, but these actually aren't even necessary. These are for UART and are optional, but they are recommended for future applications using the breakout, but they're not required for USB, and I neglected to see that before doing it, so these ones are not required at all. Really only the first one is required, but if you do connect these two cables, then they, in addition to the previous wire that you soldered, the very first one on the 10th pin of the board, should actually be hot glued to the Apple TV itself. This prevents them coming loose. And again, that is very handy and very helpful when reinstalling the heat sink because they could either become disconnected or could make a connection to another point on the board that you just don't want to have. So just apply a little bit of hot glue. You don't need much and uh, it'll be fine. You're not going to damage it at all. Just make sure obviously that you're not touching the board with the tip of the hot glue gun because they can become incredibly hot. Now next, this is the easy but also kind of the hard part. I mean, it depends on how you want to look at it because these few wires that we need to install right here, they're very close together. So the destination is incredibly close, which causes you to have to kind of do some reworking and repositioning of them, especially when you do make the connection from the board to the ethernet of the 4K Apple TV. That's what we're actually doing right here. We're connecting to the ethernet and these little solder points right here are numbered. So basically what you wanna connect are only pins three, four, and five, with the rest of the pins being used for both further and advanced USB breakout applications at some point in the future. However, for our purposes, basic USB and DFU access, we simply need the aforementioned three pins. In addition to, of course, that very first wire that we installed on the 10th pin of the breakout. Okay, and now here is where you need to connect those pins three, four, and five on the actual Apple TV Ethernet port pre-soldered points themselves. So just make note of this and connect them to those points like what's shown here in this video after I soldered them, kind of horribly might I add, but this just shows that you can still do it even if you don't have much soldering experience. Now, while these are only three separate connections, it can be kind of hard to work. So you wanna make sure that you do have your wire cut to the proper length. Unfortunately, I can't really advise you what the best length is. You might wanna just have to try it out because it all depends on how you're going to wire these things and how it best works for you. So it might be best to actually make the connections on the Apple TV itself and then work backwards to the board. It just depends on what you're most comfortable with. And also too, these wires or these points that are connected on the board, they are already pre-soldered. So you can almost just kind of take your wire, take your soldering iron and kind of just touch the wire to the connection point on the Apple TV with the soldering iron, heat it up for just a second or two, not even that really, honestly. Just touch it until the solder heats up and makes a firm and solid connection with the wire. Just make sure you're very careful not to accidentally connect a few of these points together by over melting and of course connecting the solder on them. And then connect it to the proper pin or the corresponding one on the actual breakout board itself. But basically, as I said before, these little points have numbers corresponding left to right one to seven and they're the second row below the gold right here just look for the seven connector points that we need to use or at least we need to use a few of them see I mentioned you only need three you need pins three four and five so three and four are for USB access and five is to ground it and required for system stability 
So make sure everything is connected. Once it is, then you can actually connect your cable to the breakout board. However, you have to be very, very, very careful because I accidentally broke this cable and believe me, it is so very hard to find a replacement. I was able to find replacements, however, but you can't just buy one. You have to buy a few and that's an extra expense if you do mess it up. Now, when you go to connect to this cable, you want the pins or the contact side to be touching the pins or the contacts of the actual board, of the breakout board. And this basically just means that the blue part of the cable will be facing the ethernet port. That's a very simple way to remember it. And then you're going to have to make a slight bend in it. Be very, very, very careful because you could damage it and be forced to buy a replacement, which again is what I had to do. And then once you do that, you can work it through the heat sink and then go through the process of reinstalling the heat sink. And you want to basically use a cross pattern to re-secure this thing using those T7 screws. If you don't know what that means, basically just install one in one corner and then the corner that is directly diagonal of it, you want to install that one and then just do the same thing with the other two. Now here, it's very important that you do not screw the heat sink and fan assembly down too tightly because if you do, you could damage anything that we just did to the device. And once that is done, you can then feed the cable through the plastic piece that is on the bottom and you want to make sure that you install it the right and the proper way. So to do this, make sure you're looking at the top of the Apple TV with the Apple logo situated in the correct way then flip it upside down and then put the bottom with the Apple logo facing up. So basically the Apple logos are going to be upside down from one another. They're going to be mirroring each other. Basically the leaves would be at the other ends of each other if you were able to look at both Apple logos simultaneously. It will look very janky uh, if my experience is anything to go by. And remember I did break those two clips, but because we don't want to screw that heatsink down too tight because it could either damage the wires that we soldered, the board, or the cable, you can't really get this thing fully flush, so it just looks like an absolute Frankenstein beast of an Apple TV 4K. Now you wanna make sure that you connect the USB board that stays outside of the Apple TV. Same thing applies here. Just make sure that those gold contacts are making contact with the ones on the cable. That means that the blue side is going to be facing up. And then you need to connect your micro USB cable to your computer and you're so very close to testing this thing out. Next, you need to hold down the button on the board itself. It's the DFU button and then connect it to power. Once you do that, your computer should recognize your Apple TV 4K if you did everything properly. It should only take about five seconds. Basically, the light on the front of the Apple TV will start flashing rapidly. That's how you know you're in DFU mode and you installed everything properly. And that, my friends, is where we're going to leave off with this video. This is part one. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to jailbreak. We had to make a hardware modification to be able to get to this point, but I promise you, it'll be well worth it and it'll be one that will last for hopefully years to come. I'm so very excited for the future of Apple TV 4K jailbreaking. I hope you guys are as well. And uh, just be sure to stay subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on when I release my tutorial for how to jailbreak it utilizing Check Rain. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.